What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I'm always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And on this episode, we continue with chapter 8 in the story of our faith. We are concluding our conversation about the church. Stick around. <music> get all awkwardness out of the way here yes i'm still sitting at my kitchen table and normally i do these videos from the living room um but uh time did not necessarily dictate that i could move all of my equipment into the living room for one episode so to, for this episode of the story of our faith we are we are in the kitchen um so as we've been going through the story of our faith with the sole intention of looking at the nuances of it so that we can determine that every aspect of what we believe is a confession worth dying for. As any one of us uh, could be called upon at any time to give a witness to the hope that we have to have an answer for the hope that we have, as Peter would say. And in times throughout Christian history and in, in places in the world even today, Christians are called upon to give an account of what they believe and in doing so earn themselves the sword. And that could be you or me at any time. And so we must look at our Christian faith in detail and decide, is this one article of what I believe a confession to die for? As we ask our confirmants, uh, will you hold this faith even to death rather than to fall away from it? So we've started the story of our faith by talking about that there's a God, that we're not him, that we are uh, sinful by nature that God has sent his son into the world that he uh, we are justified by grace through faith in Christ alone that God has sent ministers into the world to proclaim this message to us and that there is a place that we can gather to receive the words of God and to receive the sacraments rightly this place is the church now i'm not talking about the building the church is obviously the people but we gather either uh, in homes or in auditoriums or in great cathedrals to receive freely the gospel message of god and his sacraments and where these are administered rightly there is the church but and it's weird that this is the one we're talking about today because I've been having a lot of conversations about church with people lately, and there are a lot of people who have been hurt by the church. And so I think Article 8 um, in the story of our faith from the Augsburg Confession kind of explains a, a problem that people have and gives us an answer. So we will turn to Article 8 of the Augsburg Confession. What is what the church is? Strictly speaking, the church is the congregation of saints and true believers. However, because many hypocrites and evil persons are mingled within them in this life, Matthew 13, 24 through 30, it is lawful to use sacraments administered by evil men according to the saying of Christ, quote, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat, end quote, Matthew 23, 2. Both the sacraments and word are effective because of Christ's institution and command even if they are administered by evil men. Our churches condemn the Donatists and others like them who deny that it is lawful to use the ministry of evil men in the church and who think that that ministry of evil men is not useful and is ineffective. So what is being said here? What is being said is Jesus is very much aware that there are hypocrites in the church. Um, I, I would say uh, give, you can give yourself this test. If you want to know whether or not you're a hypocrite in the church, do you have a pulse? All right, then you're a hypocrite in the church. Look, the, <laughs> I have a pulse. That makes me a hypocrite in the church. Um, an example of this, uh, the, the evil person that I've been, when in the gathering uh, of the elect, uh, I have walked into church, and on certain Sundays we have this little songbook um, of, of old expired praise songs that even evangelicals won't sing anymore. And I saw the songbook, and I just went, Ugh, it's Boomer Sunday. Mm. And people heard me say it. Now, that was destructive. It may have been true, but it was destructive. Maybe there was a new visitor there. Who, who didn't need their first experience to be me grumbling about the fact that we were going to sing 20-year-old praise songs when the hymnody of the church is much more efficacious 
and substantial. But that wasn't helpful to someone who might be visiting, or it wasn't helpful to someone who might have been there for a very long time and was simply there to hear the gospel and to receive God's sacraments. Likewise, in the, in the early church, in the time of the Reformation, there was great, great evil in the church, brothels for priests, all sorts of crazy things. And so uh, people like the Donatists uh, said that the word that is proclaimed and the sacraments that are administered are not effective if by evil men. Well, we see from Jesus' own words that the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. So he acknowledges that they are evil. You brood of vipers, you whitewashed tombs. Oh, Jesus had all sorts of horrible things to say about the scribes and the Pharisees, but the seat of Moses is not dependent upon their goodness or their wickedness. The words and promises of Christ are not dependent on the goodness or the wickedness of your pastor, your priest, your minister, or anyone in the congregation. We are all sinners, and we are all in need of grace, even your pastor or your priest or your minister. And the promise, the good news, is that God's... Sorry, my phone's going off. (laughs) My my wrist and my pocket are vibrating. Um, The good news is that Christ's word is effective and efficacious, and it does what it declares in spite of the voice of the person speaking it. And his sacrament is his true body and true blood in, with, and under bread and wine, even if the man offering it to you is a complete charlatan. It doesn't take much. We turn on the news and we can see scandal in the church all the time. Thanks be to God that the church exists in eternity and on earth too. There's this visible and invisible nature of the one true church and that the saints in heaven are the church of Christ as we, the saints on earth, are the church of Christ and the wickedness of men cannot destroy that church. And so we stand uh, in scorn by the world when they look at these scandals and I've been a member of a church that has had an egregious scandal. I, I moved. Uh, not related to the scandal, but I moved. But I saw what that scandal did to the people. And the hope and promise that they had is that Jesus is faithful, not the particular individual that was there who caused the scandal and is now serving his temporal punishment. The words and promises of Christ stand in spite of who speaks them. I am an imperfect vessel, and I come onto YouTube to speak and to proclaim the words of Christ in those words in spite of my sins and in spite of my faults and in spite of anything that I've ever done wrong in my life or however evil I am down to my core, which I am. The words and promises of Christ stand true. So this is good news, and this truly is is a particular confession of our faith that is worth dying for, that the words and promises of Christ in his church are true, and that though the church be filled with hypocrites and all sorts of evil people, Christ's word is true, and his promise is true that against the church the gates of hell shall not prevail. Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.